Bird Bird, and today we are talking about camera movements. Many people take care of the camera, from layout to animation to comp, so this should be useful for everyone. Basically, I will introduce you to the Quake and the Shake Notes. So the Quake and the Shake Notes were made primarily for camera motion, but they can also be used for compositing. This is because if you need something to shake or quake, such as maybe line boiling or a glow effect on something, you can also attach a shake or quake note to the effect. But this is a bit more advanced. <laughs> uh, today we're gonna focus on something easy with the shake and quake note. So, to do cool camera movements in harmony using the quake and shake note is super easy. First, you need a camera. Ta -da -da! To get a camera, you can either press enter and write camera you can also find it in your node library it should be into the favorites or you can just go into your timeline go on the plus sign and find a camera there's probably other ways to get a camera in your scene but i couldn't be bothered to move a camera what do you need you need a peg so you know you would attach a peg to your camera uh, i'll remove the animatic because it's gonna be quicker i'll leave my frame here because it will help us see our camera but basically you just need a camera and a peg and then attached to the peg this is where i'm gonna put my camera shake so to get a quake or shake node, you press on enter and you find quake or shake. So quake is here and shake is here. Da -da -da -da. So they are both green nodes and green nodes mean that they are made for translation. So they're not really visual, they're just there to make things move. Just like a peg, just like a deformer or a quad map or something. And the way you use them is that you take them and you connect them to your camera. At the moment, as soon as I connect it, my camera is gonna move. This is because by default, in my settings, the quake node has a value of one. So if I connect it and I press on play, my camera quakes and you see it's insane. So quake is really intense. It's like if you want to show that a dinosaur is smashing a house, use a quake node. It's really intense and it's easy to make something crazy with it. Now we see that my quake uh, is applied on X, Y, and Z. This means it's gonna move from left to right, up and down, as well as forward and backward. Oftentimes, this can cause some issues with Z depth. So you see that when I move, sometimes my frame is gonna go in front and behind my background. This is because my camera frame here is attached to my camera. So depending on how close it is to the background, it can mess it up. So sometimes you want to turn it off. So don't forget that you can turn off the Z depth, which means it will then just move into X and Y which might be better <laughs> for your project. There's many more options you can use, but I'll let you use the documentations and your own time to experiment with those. And then I'm gonna go get the shake. Shake node is a bit more mellow. It's like a little cha-cha that your camera's gonna do instead of exploding <laughs> in million pieces. So I'm gonna take my shake node, connect it. As usual, you see it moves already because by default, there is already uh, movement in it. So I'm gonna press on play just to show you. It is much more smooth than the quake note. Again, we can see that my frame is disappearing. This is because in my shake node, I have amplitude into Z axis. Don't forget, if you don't want to get Z axis, you just set it to zero. And then if you compare it to the quake node, the shake node has more precision because instead of having just one amplitude that you set on X, Y, or Z, you can really be more specific about how you move X, Y, and Z. But the downside of the shake now is, is that it's a bit more complex to kind of understand how it works. But you should really check the documentations on it. It's gonna be more helpful. But what you have to know is that the shake node in its like back end engineering uses a turbulence, like a noise, in order to make your camera shake. So when we talk about frequency, octave, and uh, the multiplier and all that, uh, it is as if you would see a graph. Um, and uh, depending on how the noise is black and white, it's gonna affect how your camera shakes. So if it's more white or more black into the noise in that thing, it will change how your camera shakes. This is why it's a bit more mellow than the quake note. Uh, and which is also why the random seed is so important. So the way that the camera shake notes works is that it's gonna take one dot and just make it move along a noise and depending on if the value is black or white, it's going to change how your camera moves. And you see sometimes in the turbulence, you have a straight line. The random seed is there to kind of randomize this noise uh, once in a while, because otherwise, if the dot was moving and it hit this part where it's just the same value all the time, then your camera just wouldn't move. So this is what the whole like frequency, octave, multiplier, and a random seed is all about. 
So these three is to handle like the graph <laughs> and the random seed is to randomize the noise. So basically the shake node in its back end uses a noise to do its magic. And the frequency, octave and multiplier are like the function or the curve on a graph. And the random seed just randomizes the noise. So frequency, octave and multiplier, what it does, it's basically going to make a imaginary dot travel along this noise thing. Now, is it going to be a very wide movement? Is it going to be a very shallow movement? Is it going to be a straight line? I don't know. This is what the frequency octave and multiplier is going to handle. The random seed is really important because it randomizes the noise. Because depending on what your octave and multiplier and frequency is, maybe your kind of imaginary dot is going to travel the land and hit this spot right here that is very straight. So it means that the values would be the same around this part. So that's why the random seed is important. It's going to help randomize this back end noise in there. So honestly, just play with the random seed. If you see that your movement is not moving enough and it's a bit too static, this is probably because you hit a straight line in your noise. So yeah, quake and shake are very useful. And to better understand these, I really recommend trying it on a shape and watching it bounce around because now I have it on my camera so it moves around but like I said quick and shake don't have to be used on a camera you can also just create a new shape right here I'm gonna give it its own display <laughs> and just draw this little random shape and just apply a quake to it and then instead of the camera moving it's gonna be the shape and with a quake it's gonna be much smoother so quick and shake super useful for camera but also for shapes and character and also for compositing because you can connect that to anything that can take on a page. All right, so have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.